Welcome to our lecture online. By special request of the viewers who asked me to do a series of videos on units, we're going to walk through the world of physics and look at all the different units and you'd be surprised how most of them always come back down to the very same three basic units that we see in physics. Now later on when we get into electricity and magnetism, there may be one or two more you'll, as you will see. But it turns out that most of all of the units always can be, can be simplified or reduced down to simply length, mass, and time. So length, mass, and time, stand, and the units for length is meters, the unit for mass is kilograms, and the unit for time is seconds. We therefore call this the MKS system, the metric system as it's also known, which always boils down to these three basic units of length, mass, and time called meter, kilogram and seconds. The symbols we use for meter is simply m, sometimes it's confused with m for mass, but try not to have that, do, uh, have that happen to you. Kilograms is written as kg, k for kilo, and g for grams, and seconds is written as s. As you will have noticed in my videos, I like to write sec for seconds instead of just the letter s, but officially it should be the letter s. Now where do these units come from? Well, one of the ways in which a meter is defined is defined as one ten millionth, one quarter the circumference of the Earth at the equator. Since the Earth is defined to be 40,000 meters around at the equator, you take one quarter of that and then one ten millionth of that, and you have exactly one meter. I don't know how they would exactly measure that and come up with an exact meter, but that was the definition. Now, of course, they have a better definition in terms of wavelengths of a particular uh, color light. Also, what we should realize is that a kilometer is a thousand meters. Of course, a kilometer is used for determining large distances. Kilo means a thousand, so kilometer means a thousand meters, and that's exactly what it's defined as. Mass, or one kilogram, can be, oh, and I have this misspelled here, that should be mass, not mol. One kilogram is equal to the mass of one liter of water at 4 degrees centigrade. Now that's not exactly 100% correct, but close enough. So 1 kilogram can be defined as 1 liter of water at 4 degrees centigrade, which is also 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit. 1 gram is 1 1,000 of a kilogram. Remember, kilo stands for 1,000, so 1 gram is 1 1,000 of a kilogram. It's actually surprising that we don't use gram as a standard unit of mass, but that's actually such a small amount that it makes more sense to make kilograms a standard unit, and meter, which is about this long, is a good measure for standard length. Time is in seconds, and we define a second by saying that one complete solar day has 86,400 seconds. So if we take a complete solar day, we divide by 86,400, we have one second. Now also we have some prefixes that we use in various measures, especially for length, and here we have some examples. A centimeter is one one hundred of a meter because it has a prefix centi, which means one one hundred. Millimeters is one one thousand of a meter, so it has, uses the prefix milli. Micrometer, this is the symbol for micro, micrometer is a millionth of a meter, so we use the prefix micro. Nanometers is one billionth of a meter, we use the prefix nano, and picometer is a trillionth of a meter, we use the prefix pico. You'll be surprised that we use these quite a bit in physics, so it's good to know and be familiar with those particular terms. So as you will see, almost every unit will boil down to length, meters, mass, kilograms, and time seconds. It's actually quite amazing, and we'll show you in the future videos on this series how that actually works, and that's how it's done.